What do the Beatles, Ireland, Volcanoes, the Caribbean, and Silver have in common? Let's find out together here on The Culture of Currency. Today, as the thumbnail suggests, we tackle a very unique coin that ties many themes together as we rate our Silver Oriole of Montserrat. The first thing we must do is acquaint you with Montserrat. The country we are referring to is actually a territory in the Lesser Antilles of the Caribbean and is another of the ECA coins. Montserrat is an island, as you can see here on the map, that at first glance may seem quite normal, but here is the rest of the story. When you look at this coin and decide if it is right for your stack or collection, I want you to see more than just this little bird and that queen. I want you to see the story of this bird and the story of the people who have walked the shores whom many will never walk again. Montserrat is often referred to as the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. This is not due to any particular color as it looks like many other islands in the area, but rather due to the influence of some of the Irish settlers in the early days of the European habitation. The history of this island is much like others in the area that we've gone over on this channel. From the native Arawaks to now, many of the movements were based on the European conquest, slaves, and eventual emancipation. However, there is more that meets the eye. In the mid-1900s, this island became an amazing destination of tourism. It had many things that you would expect from many of the neighboring islands, but it offered a little bit more. Ever heard of a guy named George Martin? He was the manager of a little band called The Beatles. In 1979, he established a recording studio on this island in order to bring in tourism and give visitors the idea that they could see one or many of the singing sensations on this tiny island. And because I said singing sensations, that means it's time for me to ask you to like this video and comment the answer to this question. What Caribbean island would you travel to if you could, and why do you settle on that island? Now back to our story. All was well in Montserrat until it wasn't. Ten years later, in 1989, Hurricane Hugo blew ashore. It took 14 hours of wind up to 118 miles an hour to tear down everything that had made this place special. 20% of all buildings were rubble. No electricity or communications could be made. Nearly every structure had calculated damage and what was worse, the reserves of fresh water had been blown over, leaving the island with no fresh water. Instantly, 2,500 of the population, which is a very large percentage, was homeless and waterborne disease started to creep in. Time slowly started to mend the wounds of Hurricane Hugo, but nature was not done. Montserrat had been met with water and remained. Now was the reign of fire. The year was 1995, just a handful of years after Hugo. Science had developed following the volcanic explosions of St. Helen, but many lives in this situation were still lost due to the volcanic eruptions of Montserrat. Many areas, including the most populated town of Plymouth, are still uninhabited and covered in 12 meters of mud and ash. These events were so brutal and finite that the UK granted emergency citizenship to all who would come. Two-thirds of the population went to the UK. Many others went to neighboring islands. Look at this image. Do you see the red dotted line? That's called the exclusion zone, which to this day is highly dangerous and you have to be granted permission to cross. That's because this volcano is still highly active. The duality of creation and destruction is evident in the example of Montserrat. Washed and burned by nature, and yet we still are here talking about an island so resilient that it carved out a habitable section, redeveloped a thriving tourism market, and established this beautiful coin which highlights the Oriole of Montserrat, a bird that itself is close to the brink due to the same hurricane and volcanic activity. There's an estimated four to eight hundred of these birds left, meaning they are one natural disaster like we have seen from being a part of the past. What an interesting set of events and what a way to take a coin that on the surface cannot necessarily compete artistically with many of the other coins we're familiar with 
but it brings such a contrast of nature and the human experience together. So here we are looking at this coin from Montserrat, which we have learned about and now can effectively grade on our scale. Without this series, I would never have learned so much about these great islands. However, it is still a rather bland front and scores a 6 like all the others. The back is more interesting now that we know more about it. We have a conservative but to the point font surrounding a scene where the Oriole is perched and alert on a branch. One eye sees the mud and ash left by volcanic activity as smoke rises from the deadly peak and one eye is fixed on the future as it gazes at the viewer and in the scene towards the waters of the Caribbean. This is a rather stunning scene in context, but as a standalone coin, could be a little bland, so it scores a 6. Mintage is our next place to look. Just like all ECA coins, this one finds itself with 25,000 minted, which is my favorite number when it comes to mintage. There are not too few to demand an outrageous premium, and there are not so many that you think everyone has one, so it gets an 8. Now we talk about cultural significance. The front of this coin is not always something I like to call significant. However, the role that the UK played in saving so many in these hard times and offering citizenship paired with the scene on the back does award this coin a perfect 10. Collectability is the second to last area to grade. This is once again part of a series that is gaining in popularity. It has a great story and great mintage, however it is still not a standalone coin as collectible as let's say a kookaburra so I think it scores a 7. Our last area is uniqueness. This is a coin of the EC8 as stated, so the front is seen often. The back, however, is a species that I do not think has ever been featured. It also has a landscape that is unique to the island and therefore scores an 8. If you've calculated this with me, you will see that this little bird has scored a respectable 45 out of 50. Here are my final thoughts. If you collect or are thinking about collecting the EC8 series, you really need this coin. If you love Caribbean silver or have a love for nature, this coin should be on your list. If you are a stacker and care mostly about the ounces that you have, then you should only grab this coin when it's attainable and makes sense, let's say if it's only a couple dollars around spot price. I love that I have this coin and more importantly that I know now more about what makes this coin special. Thank you and as always. Please remember to stay classy and current with the culture of currency.